Okay, welcome everybody. Uh, this is our uh, new moon um, brief uh, meditation. It's an important time because if it's used properly, the Shambhala effect can come through. And uh, Michael will uh, keep on uh, admitting you to the normal uh, main room. Um, I just want to say that we are in a time when the impulse of Shambhala is very important and can be misused, uh, especially in political and religious circles. What we hope to do, however, is to bring in the will to good, translated as goodwill, as love, love in action. The world needs this. We've been having our uh, vigil for Afghanistan because there's so much there to do with um, nation building and whether or not the people who have been building the nation are abandoned by those who encourage them. We don't want to see that happen. We want to support them so that they can leave a condition of imminent danger. And some Americans also, a much smaller amount now, remains. So I'm going to plunge right into this. Um, and I trust that, uh, yeah, I think you see what I've got there. Always that this description of Shambhala, and please ponder as I talk. Um, Shambhala, where they dwell, uh, exists in physical matter, as do the Kumaras, but it is matter of the higher ethers of the physical plane. Always the first and second ether are considered to be uh, esoteric or occult. And only when uh, man has developed etheric vision will the mystery lying beyond the Himalayas be revealed. If we really want to look for the um, great council chamber of Shambhala, we will go to the highest of the cosmic ethers, which we call the sea of fire or the logoic plane. We're not there yet, of course, but we can have that in mind. That's where the true Shambhala reflected in the lower ethers exists. So let us realize as much as we can, and in the short time we have, until 3, until 12, uh, 51 and 36 seconds GMT, that the Earth is the primary base of the spine center for the solar logos. Our little planet is a first ray monad and related in power to our solar logos. So always at this time, if we use it correctly, a strong line of will energy is available. And that should help us manifest the divine plan on our own little level. 
So let us uh, bring our personality equipment uh, into a state of receptivity through purification. And we imagine that the white light of purification is sweeping through the physical body. The etheric body. Sometimes called the golden bowl. But a bowl has to hold something. the astral body. The mental body, we're speaking here of the reasoning lower mental body. And the entire personality we're using the white light right now. Sometimes we use the golden uh, orange light when we're doing the triangles meditation. So our purpose is to cultivate the individual Christ, that's first of all. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And that cultivation need not stay only an individual matter. It can apply to our groups and to our nations. And one day, and may that day be soon, it will apply increasingly to humanity. Christ is here, he is real, he's on this planet, he's the head of the hierarchy. We sometimes have to remind ourselves of that. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, We merge ourselves as the soul into a deep sense of group soul and, of course, group being. And we unite <clears throat> in our imagination with the spiritually minded people of the world. with the men and women of goodwill, with the new group of world servers, wherever they may be found, we find that the feeling of union comes over us. and that our group soul merges with the one soul of humanity 
and as it tells us in Rule 5, there is no my soul or thy soul. No longer use the thought, <clears throat> my soul or thine. That would be a big step. No longer use the thought, my soul and thine, and we come to realize eventually <clears throat> the second ray mantram, not is but me. And we project on the word of power internally the second ray word of power. I see the greatest lies and we use the indigo antikarana particularly. I see the greatest light. Oh. greatest light for us is the light of the monad, the light of Shambhala. And as something of that greatest light comes to us, we realize we are being the at least the recipient of hierarchical energy, the hierarchy being focused uh, in the cosmic ethers. Now let's always keep this in mind before we plant the seeds of the month Shambhala, is, it is a world of pure energy, of light, and of directed force. We remember the statement, the lights who carry out the will of God. It can be seen as streams and centers of force. all forming a pattern of consummate beauty, all potently invocative of the world of the soul and of the world of <coughs> phenomena. <coughs> It therefore constitutes, in a very real sense, the world of causes and of initiation. It is, as has been said, the true archetypal world for those who dwell in this planetary scheme. So. Let us take a few moments and plant a seed, some kind of betterment, some kind of inspiration that we wish to see unfold 
over the coming month. Because, you know, every farmer knows you plant at the new moon. So we plant the seed of the individual betterment. What will that be for you? plant the seed in relation, let's say, to our group, what will that be? And we plant the seed in relation to our nation and its soul potentials. What will that be? Finally, we imaginatively plant a seed for humanity as a whole. And if you can, jot these things down or put them on the computer so you do remember when we have our next new moon what you have planted. And now we have to cultivate those over the course of the month. Let us imagine that the group is a recipient of the divine energy and purpose of Shambhala. The moon is getting smaller and smaller. There are probably a number of causes for this. The power of the solar logos, yes, and also the power of our planetary logos. We'll act upon this, well, what DK calls it, this uh, corpse in space, this vampiristic uh, location, until it gradually, gradually disappears, and of course, humanity is elevation will be increased because of that. First ray energies are needed now, not the way they are so often used in the field of politics and religion, 
that is selfishly used in a very confined and cramped manner. They are needed to open the door to initiation and to the new age. And they are difficult to bear. because they detach us from many <coughs> unnecessary attachments. So let's have the group be as open as possible to the energy of divine purpose as much as we can fathom it. Divine purpose working through divine plan as received by the three great lords in hierarchy. the Manu, the Bodhisattva, Lord Maitreya, the Maha Chohan, and somehow we can begin to receive more of this will to good, which is essentially the will to love, have such a responsible task during the next few years. Every hundred years, you know, a great conclave is arranged. It includes um, all of hierarchy and the initiates and disciples in some ways and it includes the directional elements of Shambhala So as we go along with these new moon um, experiences, we want less and less interference from the personality and more and more anchoring of the divine plan on the level that we can deal with it. Now we have about Six minutes. Be 
before the actual moment of the new moon, at which point um, I will sound an ohm. And meanwhile, in the silence, um, you can work in your own way. And on behalf of the group, the nation, and all of humanity. So let us enter the silence together with another five minutes to go, approximately.
this is the new moon in Virgo. The most powerful sign at this time for the bringing in of the great second ray, the indigo ray, with which we must work and just imagine working on the divine plan every day using the presence of the indigo ray. And since the times are very stressful and the competition between good and evil is acute, let us use great invocation number two as we summon the Lords of Liberation, great shambolic beings who bring freedom, that is, liberty, who bring equality, and who bring fraternity. This is our way to bring in the first ray. And to call for the presence of the Kalki avatar, the rider on the white horse. That is the purified personality the rider is the Christ, the Bodhisattva. These are deep esoteric matters and we have the responsibility as much as we can to stay with them in our invocation of the saving forces. Let the Lords of Liberation issue forth. Let them bring succor to the sons of men. Let the rider from the secret place come forth and coming save. Come forth, Almighty One. Let the souls of men awaken to the light, and may they stand with massed intent.
let the fiat of the Lord go forth. The end of woe has come. Come forth, O mighty one. The hour of service of the saving force has now arrived. Let it be spread abroad, O mighty one. Let light and love and power and death fulfill the purpose of the coming one. The will to save is here. the love to carry forth the plan, the work is widely spread abroad. The active aid of all who know the truth is also here. Come forth, O Mighty One, and blend these three. Construct a great defending wall, the rule of evil now must end. And so we have planted some seeds and we can cultivate them as we go and we can continue to note, accept, accept our responsibility Maybe there are not so many of us in the esoteric world group, but okay. We know a little something. And we can continue to work toward that all-important time of WASAC 2025. So important for a great planetary event in which we can participate esoterically. And we will 
close our little meditation here with the third of the great invocations, remembering that it contains encapsulation, the divine plan of light, love, power, and human response. It's a great gift to humanity <clears throat> and only when the Christ um, agreed to, decided to appear in person was it released by Shambhala for human use. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, Let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. from the center where the will of God is known. Let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. from the center which we call the race of men. Let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. Thank you, friends, for gathering. 
some of us are in the middle of the night here and for others it's more convenient but these moments of the full and new moon are unique moments and we want to take full advantage of them so if you need to review what we've done it will soon be posted on Makara and uh, also on our YouTube um, channel Moria Federation Esoteric Education tomorrow we are uh, scheduled at 6 p.m. Uh, GMT to work with the EUN and um, perhaps we can do that um, we will see and if for any reason we cannot we will let you know things have been pretty intense in our schedule and uh, one maybe can't overdo it entirely maybe to overdo is uh, is expected but uh, how far one goes that's another matter but anyway for the moment that um, uh, program is scheduled And it is scheduled as a broadcast. Scheduled as a broadcast. Right? Okay, Martin, you, did, you, the, did you have yeah. something to say? Yeah. Yeah, the even is at 6 p.m. GMT, and it's on Zoom. Yeah. What's on Zoom, is it? Yeah. Okay, well then, the 6 p.m. part was correct, but uh, it's a Zoom cast. Okay. Well, anyway, thank you very much, and... Lots of love from all of us here on the communications team. And we'll be continuing to uh, work with you as the days uh, go on. There's just so much to do esoterically. And that is something we can do. We may not be members of Congress or the Senate or, you know, but we can do something. And we will continue to attempt to do so. Okay. Thank you, friends. Uh, many blessings and from all of us and we'll be, we'll be seeing you before long. Happy New Moon in Virgo, and may Christ in you, the hope of glory, uh, shine forth. Bye-bye for now.